Welcome, welcome, welcome to our first episode of She's Free. I am being made free in Christ Jesus, where the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty, there is freedom. Who the Son makes free is free indeed. So thank you for joining us on tonight. I am super excited. Hallelujah. That God gave me this vision. Hallelujah. To start this by podcast to talk about pulling down strongholds. And I'm excited to introduce our first guest on tonight. Her name is Deidre Durant. Hallelujah. This is a wonderful woman of God. Amen. That I met through seminary school. So I thank God for her. I'm just going to give you a small bio on tonight on who she is. Deidre has been an executive assistant for nine years. She provided high-level executive support for Coca-Cola, Gatorade, Multifamily Corporation, and currently healthcare. Deidre pursued her Bachelor of Science in Psychology at the University of Phoenix, where she currently resides, where she um, currently lives on today, and she is now actually pursuing her Master's in Divinity at Regent University. Amen. Deidre is a mother of three lovely children. She has two teenagers and one toddler. So wait till you see this woman of God. She is beautiful inside and out. Deidre is the early is in the early stages of her ministry as she gleans knowledge, wisdom and resources to grow in her prophetic gift. She desires to steward her gifts for God to bring him glory and honor. So I want to invite our guest in on tonight and I want you guys to just help me invite her in and thank God for her in the conversation that we're going to have on tonight. Hallelujah. Let me invite her in. Hi, Deidre. Hello. Hello. How are you? I am good. I'm a, I want to welcome my sister in Christ because you know what you mean to me. Um, yes. and I want to I start off by sharing with the viewers how we first met. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so give them a little synopsis on how we got to know one another. <laughs> All right. So our very first course together um, was Models of Discipleship and I think all of us that were part of a small group, which um, there were some prerequisites as um, part of Regent, mm -hmm. that there is three to four people in a group. And each week we would have to read at least two chapters a day, um, about 14, chap or 14 chapters each week. Each. Mm -hmm. We would um, start and end with prayer. And we would just share our testimonies, share any areas that we um, may have been struggling with, you know. Um, any sins that we needed to confess. Amen. Uh, yes. And so um, it became, it was a blessing for all of us that were part of this group and um, the reservations that we had, it, it, it blew our minds. It did. We didn't know that it was going to bless us in the way that it did. Yeah. And Deidre, I know when I first went back and our professor said that we had to start this life transformation group, I was like, this is another thing that I have to do that I do not have time for. <laughs> but as yes. you said, it has been a blessing. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have yes. built trust and love amongst mm -hmm. the four of, of us. And every, when we meet on a weekly basis, it's such a blessing that I can mm -hmm. go, come to my sisters in Christ and share yes. what we've been through during the week. And then we pray for one another. We encourage one another. We cry. We do, we do a lot of crying. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? One of the things that uh, another uh, member of our group and myself struggled with was crying. And, oh and um, there was such a purge and a release with that, you know, um, that I didn't I didn't know was available. Right. Oh we try God. to hold on to this like, hard exterior because for me, I'll tell you, to be honest, I don't have time for it. I don't have time for the the headaches that come with the ugly crying. And now you feel sluggish, but mm -hmm. some of the best sleep has come out of it and the purging and how God now that something uh, has come out, he is able to fill you up with something new. And um, and yes, we have done a lot of crying, but he has been filling us up with something beautiful and new. Amen. Amen. I know because the life transformation groups have been a blessing to all four of us. Um, because I, I, I believe that's the beginning of when the strongholds begin to come down. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I was able to be vulnerable and share a lot of things that I've, I've kept hidden in my heart. God knows, but mm -hmm. things like how you said that we have this, this exterior where we think we always have to be tough. Mm -hmm. My God, I'm about to tear up right now thinking about it because 
you know, in those conversations, we were all vulnerable and we share um, mm -hmm. some of the struggles that we face on a day to day basis. And Deidre, me and you, we had a lot in common mm -hmm. about a lot of things that we've been through and a lot of things that we're still holding on to. Mm -hmm. um, that God has to deliver us from. But mm -hmm. I want to start out like we normally do in our life transformation groups. We start off with prayer. Yes. We're going to do our round table and we're going to pray together. And we're mm -hmm. going to ask God to come into our presence on tonight because we know and I believe in God that some mm -hmm. woman is going to be touched by our conversation on tonight. Amen. Um, and know that it's okay. Yes. It's okay not to be good. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be vulnerable. Amen. It's okay not to have the, the exterior that looks like everything is okay, but then your, your, your yeah. camera's on the, on the inside. Exactly. I've been there, um, yeah. and, and, it's, and, and it's like, um, you know, I, 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 I hate to say it like this. It's like you, you have this mask on <laughs> mm. that people oh, yeah. see one thing, but mm -hmm. there's something different going in on the inside. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, my God. But tonight, the mask is coming off. Mm -hmm. The strongholds, we're pulling them down. Amen. 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 And I'm going to start, uh, amen, with a scripture. Um, and I'm going to pull it up on our screen. Hallelujah. I got so much stuff going on tonight. So um, <laughs> 2 Corinthians, we're going to start with 2 Corinthians um, verse 10, I mean, chapter 10, verses 4 through 5. And mm -hmm. then we're going to go in prayer. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll start with our candid conversations. But 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, 5 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm -hmm. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, mm -hmm. casting down mm -hmm. imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Mm -hmm. So tonight we are pulling down mm -hmm. every stronghold. Amen. And we're going to start with a stronghold of unforgiveness. It has a lot of women mm -hmm. in God, in the name of Jesus, have a lot of women struggling with this, including mm -hmm. myself. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, and we'll get into some conversation too about there's some secret things in our hearts that are mm -hmm. that's still there that we mm -hmm. don't even know about. Right. Amen. But we mm -hmm. gotta ask the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, to reveal those things to us because mm -hmm. we want to be free. She's yeah. free on tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hands on Christ right now. Let's go into prayer. Yes. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Hallelujah for this time with Deidre, Father. Lord, I ask you right now, God, to come into our midst, Father. You said when two or three are in the midst, Father, in the name of Jesus, we have been called together. You are in the midst. Father, Lord, we asking you right now, God, to have your way as we surrender to your perfect will, Father. Lord, I'm praying right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, that, that when they look at me, they see you, Father. They see your glory, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak through your service on tonight, God. Lord, I'm praying right now, God, that every person that hears this broadcast on tonight, God, that their heart be changed, God, that they be renewed in you, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, and they learn and they choose to forgive and let go of all the pain, the hurt, Father, the shame, anything that they're holding on, God, in the name of Jesus, that's a stronghold. Father, we thank you right now, God, and we give your name all the praise and all the glory, and amen and amen. Come amen. on, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It is done. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It is done. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes, All right, Deidre. So let's go there. Let's yes, go there. we already started prayer. <laughs> I am already. Look, I probably should have got me some napkins because I know I'm going to start crying because I'm such a cry baby. Amen. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but let's, let's, let's do some tough stuff right now. Okay. Let's go to the heart. Amen. Mm -hmm. I gave you an, a heart assignment. Amen. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to bring the heart for all those that are looking and, and um, are streaming in live on tonight. Um, this is an exercise that I did with our women's department at my church, and um, it was life changing. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw a lot of strongholds tumbling down where people were delivered. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I asked Deidre um, before um, tonight to meditate on the heart. Mm -hmm. Right. And these are the things that God says that we are. Amen. Yeah. And he says that we're beautiful, mm -hmm. that we're victorious, Amen. that we are enough, that we are created in his image, mm -hmm. that we are strong, yes. that we are amazing, that we are capable. 
and chosen and never alone, always loved. Hallelujah. And my assignment for you, amen, hallelujah, and I'm going to put up the banner, to select two words from the heart mm -hmm. that describes, one, a personal struggle, mm -hmm. and two, a personal strength. Yes. And I wanted you to meditate on the word of God and tell me what the Holy Spirit revealed to you. Amen. Yes. And, and if you have the scripture, you can read the scripture and you can tell me what the Holy Ghost revealed to you. And for those that are looking, there's a heart exercise. Amen. Amen. It's like two words from the heart that describes a mm -hmm. personal strength and a personal struggle that you mm -hmm. deal with. Amen. All right. Amen. So you can tell me what did the Lord reveal to you in this assignment? So when I meditated on those words, I uh, first said, which one is sticking out to me as it relates when I think of struggle and as I think of a strength? Mm -hmm. And um, this is one that um, is no surprise to you as it relates to the LTG. Um, mm -hmm. And that's enough is my struggle. And so I have the verse in the uh, that was associated with the heart exercise in the New Living Translation. And it says, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My God, my power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. My God. And so um, it's no surprise that that um, verse came to mind. I almost kind of chuckled because it was one that we had talked about often in our LTG group. Yes. And, um, it's still something that I am struggling with as it relates to different areas of my life where I feel I have fallen short. And, um, you know, it's, it's trying, it's trying to strive for perfection mm -hmm. and knowing that, you know, we are finite at the end of the day. Yes. And, um, we, we are going to miss the mark, but there is something internally that says, oh, I know I could have done this better. Uh -huh. you know? And so, you know, mom guilt will settle in or I could have done this at work better or more mm -hmm. efficiently. And then we just kind of start beating ourselves up yes. and saying where we miss the mark. Miss and the a mark. lot of times uh, when I used to work in sales, um, I actually was able to use things that were a mistake and actually bounce back from it. And it actually worked in my favor. It was weird. It, mm -hmm. it, it was like, um, it was showing that I was a normal person, that I wasn't just some sleazy salesperson or, you know, somebody who was, you know, just trying to, you know, make a deal, like showing them my vulnerabilities and showing them that I wasn't perfect or that I made mistakes actually ended up working out. But the, <laughs> the word says in Romans 8, 28, that he works all things out for us. Are good. Yes. 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 And so um, as I was mentioning a little bit earlier, um, I had two sessions last week. One was with my therapist that I hadn't spoke to since June. <laughs> and the other was with my current teacher in children's ministry. Um, and so as it relates to um, the stronghold of not feeling enough, um, my, uh, my, in the same thing, they said the same thing, this, this very verse. So it's just more confirmation. And that's how, God, that's how, you know, God is speaking to you. Sometimes people are asking, you know, like, I don't hear from the Lord, but when you start to see his word in mm -hmm. scripture, in other areas or from different people who have no connection at all, that is how, you know, he is speaking to he you. He is speaking. Amen. Yep. And so that's when you continue to have that dialogue with him. And so in sharing with you and sharing with our LTG, um, where I have fallen short, where I have that stronghold, allowing Holy Spirit to minister because we do not have to carry these burdens alone. No, we don't, you know, and say you know, that again. Tell, tell, tell the audience that again. <laughs> we do not have to carry the burdens alone. And very specifically, Moses, when he was on the mountain and he had his hands up, lifted up. Right. That is a sign of surrender to to the, to God. Right. And he had Aaron and I'm and I apologize. I don't remember the other gentleman that was on the uh, on the other My side God. of him, but they sat him on a rock, My Lord. a firm foundation, and they helped him to raise and lift his hand so that lift they hands up. be victorious in battle. We don't carry these burdens by ourselves. And when we share with each other, God is doing something. 
in our lives and ministering to us and breaking down strongholds. And we're, we are being delivered. We are set free, but there is something that makes us feel like we, you know, because we have the memories associated with the same and the past and whatever happened, that is what keeps us from moving forward and moving on. And so uh, when I spoke with my teacher last week, she explained to me, she says, it is as if you are stuck in mud and you are revving your car and all the wheels are spinning and you're going absolutely nowhere. You're trying to do everything in your own strength, power and might. Jesus. Mm -hmm. But you're stuck. But you're still stuck and you're wasting energy going nowhere. <laughs> going nowhere. Yes. My God, that just resonated with me because I've been stuck a lot of times in my life where I didn't know how I could move forward. Mm-hmm. But God, mm-hmm. but Deidre, and, and that, that goes back to what we were talking about before um, we, we got on this line is that I believe mm-hmm. that a lot of people are stuck mm-hmm. because they're still waddling in their shame. Yes. And they refuse to open their mouth. Mm-hmm. The yeah. enemy wants to keep us quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then what happens is we stay stuck. We keep spinning, mm-hmm. spinning, and we're going nowhere. Yes. yes. But tonight I decree and declare, oh, Amen. God, we coming out of that mud. Amen. <laughs> yes. Put a board under my tires and so that we can go. <laughs> We coming out. <laughs> that is really good. That's deep. That's, that's deep. That's really, it really is. deep. Yes. And, you know, I feel like it was so timely because the reason I had reached out to my instructor is because children's ministry is where you talked about vulnerabilities is where God is reconstructing some areas of my life because of things I didn't know as a young mom. As you mentioned, I have two teenagers and then I have a toddler. There are things that I know now mm-hmm. that... I didn't know with my teenagers. And so there's a lot of remorse and regret and shame associated with, you know, um, repeating learned behavior, right? We talk about sometimes uh, generational curses that Mm -hmm. it can be um, not so much demonic. It could be just uh, um, learned behavior, right? It's a learned behavior. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And so she gave me when I when I spoke to her about some of the things that I'm gracefully broken in, you know, and just giving God all those pieces so that he can repair and, and fix it. Right. He can stand in the gap. And that's why that verse ministered to me also, because his grace is sufficient. Any, nice. any gap that I have, his grace is sufficient. He can restore what the canker worm has eaten or the locust. Has eaten. Preach. He can redeem time. Right. Yes, you can. I always heard that you can make more money, you can get another job, you can do everything. But time is something that we don't have the ability to get back. God can redeem time. He can redeem. He can redeem it. Yes. Add years onto your life. Yep. Absolutely. Amen. 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 Yep. And And so, so what else? What else did you? What resonated with you? Um. Yeah. With that that word itself. (laughs) Um. So when you had talked about shame. Um, That was the other piece to it, because my teacher had shared with me that um, there was a a novel that she or a book that she wrote. I'm sorry. I apologize. There was a book that um, she shared a quote from. Mm -hmm. And they said that shame was the epidemic of this generation. And she said, no, shame is an epidemic of all time. Because if you think back to Genesis with Adam and Eve, when they first sinned, they were embarrassed and they were, they felt shame. They were trying to cover themselves. Cover themselves. Jesus. And it's the same thing that happens to us because Mm -hmm. of our shame. We try to cover up our sin. Mm -hmm. We try Mm -hmm. to cover up any vulnerabilities that we have, anything that we go through, we try to cover up because we don't want people to Mm -hmm. know that we we too struggle with issues. Mm -hmm. We too have issues in our lives that we need to be delivered from. So what we do, we try to cover up the sin, the same thing that Adam and Eve did. Mm -hmm. When they they did. Mm -hmm. Nothing is new under the sun. Nothing is new under the sun. (laughs) My God. But today Mm -hmm. we're not hiding anymore. Nope. No, nope. we're going to we're going to take it off mm-hmm. and we're going to let people know yes. that we we too, we have struggled in these areas. But I know that God is able to deliver us. He yes. is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you want to want to be delivered. Yes. Mm. 
That's the question. Yeah. Do you really want to be delivered? Mm -hmm. Because if you want to be delivered, we have a deliverer and his name is Jesus. Amen. I, as you mentioned that the pool of Bethesda came to mind. My God. Because all those people were looking for healing around the pool of Bethesda. My God. And he went to one person and he says, do you want to be healed? Do right. You so yes, you do have to want to be healed. You want, you got to want it for yourself. That's yeah. why I said in, in this season of my life, mm -hmm. I want to be completely free. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, every day my prayer is, Father, show me the hidden secret things of my heart. Amen. You know, like David said, try me. Mm -hmm. Try Amen. me, Father. That's a tough prayer. That's, that's a tough <laughs> prayer every single day. But <laughs> in order to be, be delivered, Mm -hmm. I, and you say, ask, you know, ask yep. if not, the door shall be open. Mm -hmm. And I keep asking him, yep. show me the hidden things of my heart, because I know there's places in my heart where I'm still holding on to unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I could go into the testimony how God delivered, had showed that to me. And um, and, and I, well, I want to go on with the exercise. We'll go back to the testimony. Oh. <laughs> Let's go on with the exercise. OK, what else yeah. did you want to share about the fact of not feeling like you are enough because I have felt that way. And I think mm -hmm. that now I'm in a season that I'm beginning to know who I am in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. that I know that I am enough. Right. Right. Well, I think the other piece of that, that makes me feel not enough is because, and I've shared my testimony with you of, of being a survivor of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a single mom and, you know, not feeling enough because I feel like, you know, is somebody going to want, and I won't say want, that's not the right words because it says in scripture, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So mm -hmm. I know I'm a wife. Yeah, Y'all yeah, yeah. <laughs> hear that? All the women out there that are single, you are a wife. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Declare it and decree it and hold on to it because he is faithful. God yes, is faithful. He is, he is and, faithful. You know, and I know sometimes we uh, get impatient. And we take things in our own hand. And we know from scripture, women have done the same thing. There's nothing, again, nothing new under the sun. Go back to Genesis and read some of those stories. Amen. 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 <laughs> they had some, yeah, they had some, you know, but that's what makes the Bible so relatable. You know, for anybody who is new to the faith listening, you know, when, when people say, well, this was written in this Old Testament, what does that have to do with today and, and, and everything? No, you need to read those stories. They have some complicated relationships. And I was actually looking at the genealogy of Abraham with Amen. all those different, the sons, the 12 tribes of Judah. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize when I actually looked at the tree and who was the mother of who, that they were brothers and cousins. <laughs> I don't think people realize that when they say the 12 tribes of Judah and, and they were all brothers. No, they're cousins too. <laughs> yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> My Lord. So I think that was the other, the last piece that really kind of spoke out to me with not feeling like enough and some of the things that I'm still personally struggling with. And I know there's some, I will say residual because God has delivered me from so much. Uh, just on my testimony from that, um, I had went down a, a spiral with drinking very heavily and, wow. you know, and I had um, living a sexually immoral life mm -hmm. and, and God has I am sober and I am living a pure life. And I, mm -hmm. and I shared this because, because I never thought I could do it. It my was, God. it was definitely like the car, the car stuck in the mud. I couldn't do it on my own strength power. Like, I had to surrender that area of my life My God, and it was through a Lordship prayer. Lordship prayer. Mm -hmm. And, and, and let's go back to, um, the abuse piece. Mm -hmm. Um, because I mean, and this is one of the, the topics and subjects that we we spoke about because we've both been in abusive relationships, mm -hmm. right? Um, and coming out of that, I, I think that's where I was scarred. Mm -hmm. I was hurt. Um, and um I constantly was getting into these bad relationships. And I was like, what is going on? I'm like, mm -hmm. can I not draw somebody that's good? <laughs> and um, but I realized that I was drawing what what was in me. It was mm -hmm. broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was broken. Mm -hmm. I was hurt, yep. and it was hard for me to trust again. Um, mm -hmm. and I thank God for my husband. And 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 this year is gonna be ten years we've been married. Praise God. Um, but it took me time to forgive my abuser. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. How was that for you? I mean, is it something that you can you struggle with today or have you been delivered from that? Have you forgiven your abuser? It took time. It took time. And um, I know the heart exercise, we had one other piece of it, but I want to touch on the area of unforgiveness because um, I did what we know as a topical study. I went to the concordance um, of our Bible mm -hmm. and I, I read all the scriptures that related to unforgiveness. My God. And I still struggled. And um, back in Michigan, when I was still living there, uh, we had Sunday school and our teacher, it felt, I thought she was a dog with a bone and wouldn't get off that topic. I said, can we talk about anything else? Why are you talking about unforgiveness? But I know it wasn't her. I know it was Holy Spirit. And he was trying to get a message in through to me that this was something that I needed to address. And one day after Sunday school, I was in tears. I was I weeping and I went to her and I said, I know the verses. I have read them. I have prayed them. I have written them mm -hmm. out and I'm still struggling with this. And I don't know how to, uh, how to deal with this. My Lord. And it took her a minute to respond, but her answer was seasoned with so much love and so much grace. My Lord. She told me, <laughs> mm -hmm. she said the fact that I was crying was evidence that I wanted to do the right thing. Oh, that it was an area that I was struggling with my Lord and that every Christian has an area that they struggle with, struggle with. Mm -hmm. there, there was something, my heart was saying, I wanted to do it, <laughs> but I, I struggled. I did. It was hard. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's something that I have to make a conscious choice, um, to do continuously. Amen. Amen. Yeah, because I, I was meditating on a scripture where it says that we have to forgive 70 mm -hmm. times seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I started thinking about that. I was like, Father, sometimes <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Let's be real here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really, really hard. Um, and he was like, you know, he asked me the question, do you love me? And I said, yes, I do love you. Mm -hmm. He was like, so you you have to choose to forgive any person that has done anything to you. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to realize that we can't forgive on our own strength. Yeah. Our own power. Mm -hmm. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Yes. And it's that a choice was... that we make and then we allow him to do the work in us. Mm -hmm. And that was something that um, I purchased a book. Uh, it was Bishop Jake's daughter, Cora, um, Cora Jake's. Mm -hmm. And it's called Ferocious Prayer Warrior. Ferocious Prayer Warrior. Mm -hmm. And she had a declaration at the end of her prayer, by faith, so it is, and, and uh, uh, so it is, and by faith, it is so. It is so, yeah. And um, by faith, I forgive. My God, by faith. By and, faith and, 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 let's, and let's tell the viewers, by faith, you forgive. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we try to do this on our own. Mm -hmm. But we've got to ask the Holy Spirit to help us in those areas mm -hmm. because there's a lot of women that are walking around with a lot of shame, mm -hmm. a lot of hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and rightfully so. <laughs> yes. um, because I, it, when I started thinking about it, it says, you know, when we forgive, are we condoning sin? No, we're not condoning the sin. Mm -hmm. But we forgive because our father says that if we don't forgive, he then can. he's not going to forgive us. That's right. Amen. And yeah. that's the love. But if we say that we love our father. Mm -hmm. Then we got to ask him to help us to walk in forgiveness towards anybody that done anything to us. Mm -hmm. There, there's one other thing I want to share on that, um, and I love this devotional, and uh, it was actually one for men. But God's word is alive and breathing. If it may be something that was designated for a man, so to speak, He can use it for you, for His glory to speak and minister to you. Mm -hmm. So we walk by faith, correct? Yes, Even we do. We cannot see. And when we're walking and we come across different terrains, we may get a pebble or a stone stuck in our shoe. Jesus. Are we going to continue to walk with a stone in our shoe? It's going to start hurting our foot, our hip and our knees are going to be um, hurting and aching. Come on and for a period of time, we're going to have to stop and address that pebble in our shoe. And so unforgiveness can come back. Yes, you think you have mastered it. You think you have done it. You you feel like you've been healed. Jesus. And then when you cross this 
this terrain that seems familiar or, you know, um, comes back again. You thought yes. you were, you know, it's like those triggers, you know, something smell, you smell something that smells familiar or you hear something and it just brought that you. back to memory. When, if you get triggered, you know, you have to address it. You have to address and then it. you can continue to walk with God after you have addressed that unforgiveness. My Lord. Look, I um I have this quote. Um, it says forgiveness is the restoration of freedom mm. to oneself. Amen. We free yeah. ourselves when we yes. choose mm -hmm. to forgive. Mm -hmm. When we walk around with all this bitterness and angry, being angry, yeah. I mean we're harming ourselves. Mm -hmm. But when we choose to forgive, yes, it's like then now it's like we're eating freedom. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it is. We can be free. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's a image on social media where somebody has this uh, rope around their hand and it's causing them pain. But once they release the rope, there's no more pain. And that's a great visual yes, about when you're holding on to that anger, that bitterness and that unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. It is causing you pain because you just have to be the one to release. And it's hard to let go. It's hard. But you know, um, specifically, um, cause I didn't share all that happened. My situation was a very uh, serious one where my abuser held me hostage for 16 hours. My Lord. There was a SWAT team and a negotiator and several other police departments outside of my house. Yes. And for 16 hours. And so by God's grace, it's going to be 10 years in April my that I have, that I was, Save from that moment. And that's how I know the enemy was trying to, he tried to take me out. And I said, I don't know what, what was the reason? What was the purpose? But like you said, when you started, we are called. We God, are called. The enemy saw the anointing, right? But when you, when you are, when, how do you uh, extract oil from the olive? It, it, has, it has to be, to be pressed. crushed. Yes. And it has to be crushed. And um, it is in that pressing, in that crushing, that your oil will flow. God is all the glory. All the glory. All the glory. And you, and you know why? And I, I'm glad you said that because um, we don't like to go through things. Mm -hmm. We don't like to be in pain of any kind. Mm -hmm. But I'm in this season where I thank God for every trial, for every tribulation, for every hurt, for every pain. Mm -hmm. Because I know that he's molding me mm -hmm. and shaping me mm -hmm. into his divine image. Yes. And I'm I like, mean, Father, I keep me on the potter's wheel. Mm. Mm. Keep us there. <laughs> you know, and that's that pruning process also. We don't, we don't want to go through nothing. Mm -mm. But no. in order to be pruned, mm -hmm. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it ain't no pruning needing if you ain't, if you ain't going through nothing, everything okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and and our group had our LTG group had said it was the season of contradiction. Yes, and that you know because there were certain themes that I, that would stick out in our group in our sessions because um, we each we we all know the word we love God's word we have a personal intimate relationship with Him right and that doesn't mean that you're going to be exempt from trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. In nope. fact, He said in His word that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but, but <laughs> God delivers them from them. All, oh, all of them. <laughs> Not Jesus, everyone. Oh. We, we are victorious in Christ actually, Jesus. <laughs> amen. And actually, uh, that was what I was going to put on my personal strength was victorious. Victorious. Yeah. And, and you know that through the, mm -hmm. the through the God that we serve, mm -hmm. that yeah. we're already victorious in him. That's what we just have to walk in it. Amen. Walk yes. in it. Just walk in it. Be free in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. That, that, that is good. I mean, I, I and I knew this exercise was going to be helpful mm -hmm. um, because it's like we we as women, mm -hmm. you know, we are wonderfully and, and made in, in God's image. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're beautiful on the inside and out. But a, but a lot of times the enemy comes in and he plays with our minds mm -hmm. to make us believe that we're not good enough. Yes. Or that shame. He'll try to say that you won't be forgiven by God. He, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. You won't be forgiven by God. Oh, mm -hmm. you've done so much wrong in your life. Oh, mm -hmm. God will never forgive you. Mm -hmm. But that's not the God that we serve. No. Amen. Amen. He's a loving and kind and gracious father. Amen. So I say to our audience tonight, if there's anything that you're struggling with, give it to God. Mm -hmm. Cast all of your cares upon him. For he loves us. Yeah, he loves us um, enough. And he knows about every struggle that we go through. Mm -hmm. We can't hide nothing from him because he's yes. a sovereign God. Amen. Yes. So all we have to do is give it to him. And he knows you better than you know yourself. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> all the hairs on my head. <laughs> <laughs> he knows me better than I know myself. There, why did I do that? Oh my <laughs> <You> gosh. <know. laughs> That is so so true. So I thank God for that um for the heart exercise. Yes. So let's move into like unforgiveness. Yes, yes. Um and something that um hit me like I was I was telling you that um I I normally pray and ask the Lord to show me the hidden things of my heart. Mm -hmm. Um and I didn't recognize until, and I know, you know, everybody always says, oh, there's hidden things. But there was one thing that resonated with me a couple of years ago. And I, I think I shared this story with you. Um, I was at an event at our church and it was honoring the fathers. Mm -hmm. And um, there was an exercise. I can't remember exactly what it was, but they wanted you to write a note to your father and put it in the jar or something like that. And, um, and when they said that, um, I began to weep and cry. Wow. And I'm like, why am I weeping and crying? My father died before I was ever born in, in a, a tragic car accident. So I never knew my father. Oh. And I remember going to the bathroom and I was weeping and I was kept asking the Holy Spirit, what is this all about? Mm -hmm. And he said, you're releasing unforgiveness wow. to a father that you never knew. Wow. My God, I'm about to, I do Jesus. Wow. He said, you are releasing unforgiveness mm. from a father that you never knew. And, and one of the things that resonated with me, because those of us that have grown up with mm -hmm. not having fathers in the household, mm -hmm. that is it's something that we desire. It's a tactic of the enemy. He hates families. He it's hates an attack of families. Yes. And... When people are, um, and you know, I grew up with my mother and she did a wonderful job raising a, a family of six. Wow. Um, but there was always something that I was missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was having a father figure wow. in yeah. the house. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize that a lot of the mistakes that I made as a young girl yeah. was because of the fact that I didn't have a father. And mm -hmm. I was holding this resentment Mm -hmm. To a father that I never met, and he died in a tragic car accident when it wasn't his fault that right. he wasn't there. Right. But I was carrying this resentment because I needed a father in my life. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and that's why I say that there are so many hidden things in our hearts mm -hmm. that we would never know unless God Himself reveals it yes. to us. Yes. So there's some things that people are harboring right now in their hearts. Mm -hmm. They think they don't got over it. Yeah. <laughs> right. But back to what you said earlier, sometimes it can be a trigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll pull you right back in. And then mm -hmm. you realize, oh, I thought I forgave. Yeah. But I'm and still it's... holding on to that thing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So talk to me about is there an area in your life or something that God has revealed to you where you are holding on to unforgiveness and that you need to let it go? Yes. Uh, so um, my oldest has a different father and um, he has been in and out kind of, you know, with upbringing and not really around as much. And financially, there wasn't a lot of contribution there as well. And, you know, where mom guilt comes in is, oh, if I had money to put him in sports or this or that, you know, how much, you know, would that have been better or uh, more advantageous for them? And uh, you know, my oldest is going to be 18 soon. And um, some some emotions that I didn't even know were there, the, and obviously they were hidden, um, were surfacing. Uh, resentment and anger that the realization that, oh, now he's eight, he's going to be 18. And where were you this whole time? My God. And uh, so, yeah, I, I was struggling um, 
lodged with him with some unforgiveness and I didn't know it was there this, this entire time. And, um, and I know it's because he's going to be 18. I know he's going to be graduating. And so, uh, I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me through this process because I didn't know this was something, you know, I thought I would just move on and, you know, moms we make it happen. You know, Thanksgiving, you know, we figure it out and pull a, a meal all together. We, we, oh we, we figure it out and we just keep on moving. And, and for me, I just, I didn't want to give it any thought because it was, if I gave it thought and emotion or energy, then it was going to be depleted from the things that I needed to do. To mm-hmm. wear multiple hats. And in order for me to give my 100%, I cannot be thinking about this over here, you know, where it's going to be a distraction or keep me, you know, I know it would keep me stuck if I gave it the energy. So I don't want to think about it. Amen. And so out of sight, out of mind. So I thought that's not always true. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not. This is what this is what has surfaced most recently in the area of unforgiveness for me. Okay, my lord, my lord. So, how are you dealing with that? Well, uh, God has a sense of humor. I know He does. Uh, He has a way of making things turn things full circle. Um, Him and I have been talking more recently, and so um, you know, we're as parents, we're going to figure figure it out, and so. Um, one thing that I want to add to that as it relates to fathers, I feel this really pressed on to share. Um, my own father and I were, uh, estranged for quite some time and he was an absent father for many years of my life. And, uh, when I say God can restore what was broken and redeem time, him and I reconciled six years ago when I first moved to Phoenix. Lord. We have a thriving relationship. And I feel that so pressed on my spirit to share as it relates to any areas of brokenness, as it relates to a father not being present, whether whether deceased or whether an absentee, whether, you know, he was there, but he was, you know, on drugs or alcohol or, or whatever the case may be. I feel it so pressed on my spirit to share that God can redeem time because the father that I have now even though all those years I, I said I needed you then, he is giving me the answers that I need as a mother today, as a daughter today. He is, God redeems time. And I just want to share that testimony for somebody who is listening because I feel it so pressed upon my spirit to share. And so even taking that same principle for my own life and applying it to my situation with my oldest, I know God will do the same thing. Jesus. Because our God is faithful and he never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he did it then, he'll do it again. Because we have the victory through Christ Jesus. Victory through Christ Jesus. My God, I'm so glad you you talked about restoration Mm -hmm. of relationships because what will, and I'm and I, I believe that we're in this season that what was once broken, mm-hmm. <laughs> God is restoring. Amen. Mm-hmm. And 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 I, I'm grateful that now you have a relationship with your father, but you can't hold on to what was. Mm-mm. No, you gotta and, live in the now. And I had to forgive all of that. Uh, and in the beginning, I was watchful. <laughs> I forgive, but I'm watchful. You're right? watchful, mm-hmm. and uh, and and I was just waiting to see if there was going to be that that flicker mm-hmm. or that Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde moment, and I was going to have to put you back, you know, back <laughs> on the shelf and say, "Okay, here we go again." Um, but I was watchful for quite a while, and when I say our relationship is thriving, I talk to my dad weekly for my hours. God. For hours. Mm-hmm. And I pray that this gives someone that's listening hope. Amen. That if they if they don't have a relationship, because I, I mm-hmm. I'm sensing this too, there's somebody that's listening here that don't have a strong relationship with their children. Mm-hmm. Yep. They may have a prodigal son. Mm-hmm. A, yep. a prodigal little girl mm-hmm. that has left. Mm-hmm. But I'm believing and trusting God for restoration in this mm-hmm. season. Amen. Restoration of family, because Deidre. The enemy is trying to tear down families. Mm-hmm. We already know that. Mm-hmm. He's trying to divide and conquer. Yes. Um, and my mother has been praying this for the last couple months about restoration of family. 
Mm-hmm. We need each other. And Amen. then and thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, charity starts at home. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. It starts at home. Mm-hmm. And we can't even get along with our brothers and sisters and our children and our household. How come we're going to get along with people out in the street? And that's so true. I think, uh, you know how we're always t- uh, plugged into our devices and whatnot nowadays? Yes. Um, there has been a, a promotion of like isolation and independence. But we, like you said, we need one another. We, you know, families need to continue to get back together. And it's not an easy one because I know sometimes that hard hardness in your child, that rebellious in your child, right? <laughs> I said, I'm going to walk around the walls of Jericho seven times and I'm going to scream with the mighty voice of triumph. And these, the walls of their <laughs> heart, <laughs> <come down. laughs> no stone is going to be left unturned. I'm fighting for my family. You are the intercessor. As yes. a believer, you are the intercessor for your family. I love it when Job, in the in that first uh, chapter, it says that, um, Holy Spirit, that Job would make and do sacrifices on behalf of his children. children. In case they curse God in their hearts. My God. He did that in case they curse God Cursing. in their hearts. So Job was an intercessor. My God. For his children, for his family. We are the intercessors for our my families. families. My fa- Oh my God. Look, that's another topic of prayer <laughs> that's deep in my heart. If, if nobody's going to intercede, Mm-hmm. We need to intercede for our family. We should be praying for them daily. Yes. yes. And my prayer is that, that anyone that hears this, this recording on tonight, if you're looking at us live now, mm-hmm. is that you go to God and you pray that your family yes. be restored. Yes. Pray for restoration of relationships. And Deidre, I want to hit on something too. And I know we come into seven o'clock. That's why I told you the Holy Spirit already told me it's going to be part two. Yes, amen. Two, we got a lot of <laughs> topics to hit on. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but, but one of the things is that, that just resonated me, with me is when you said that the enemy wants to keep us in isolation. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of women that are listening now that think they can do it on their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you, you need someone else yeah. to hold up your arms mm-hmm. like they did for Moses. Amen. Yes. You need a sister in Christ. You Amen. need someone that can mm-hmm. hold up your arms when mm-hmm. you're down. Amen. They can give you an encouraging word when you need it. Hallelujah. We yes. all need someone else. And I, that's why I'm so thankful, Deidre, for our life transformation group. We call it LTG. Yes. Our life transformation group because we hold up each other's arms mm-hmm. and with no judgment. Amen. Let me say that again. With nope. no judgment. Mm-hmm. Because let me tell you, if you think you got it all together, you don't. No. There's always room for improvement. <laughs> yes. It's always room, room for a premium. Like the yesterday, my husband preached, we have been made, mm-hmm. made to be free. Yes. Can, and, and the thing is, but we have to make a choice to walk in freedom. And yes. one of the things that the enemy tries to do is isolate us and keep us from the people of God, from mm-hmm. the people that love us, from building mm-hmm. relationships, yep. right? Mm-hmm. That because, I mean, God is a relational God. He didn't Amen. put us on this earth to be by ourselves. That's why he gave Adam Eve. <laughs> yes. Amen. You know, and go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, they have referenced, you know, as sheep. Well, sheep are social creatures. Yes, they are. We are meant to be in community and, and with one another. <laughs> we need one another more we than we think another. we do. And, and when we try to do it on our own, you know, you can. Uh, I love this analogy of like a symphony orchestra. You may have a solo and you can knock it out, standing ovation, everything. You you can do great on your own, but to create a masterpiece. To create a masterpiece. You need the orchestra. You need the other instruments. It's not about what you can do on your own. It's My about God. how you all sound together to create something beautiful. Jesus. That's good. Now that's good, Deidre. <laughs> that is good. It's like you can't. I mean, it, to to bring us all together, that that creates a sound. Mm-hmm. My good. God, that mm-hmm. creates a sound. Yeah. That's why I, I love. Um, we have the uh, morning um, prayer group, and mm-hmm. I love when the women come together because mm-hmm. it's always about a sound Amen. that we can make to God together. Amen. In unity. 
-hmm. He wants us to abide in unity with one another. Yeah. Amen. So mm -hmm. we thank God on tonight. And I know we're coming to, to a close. So, but Deidre, yeah. I want to thank you. And I know there's so much more that we can talk about. So I'm, I'm going to have you back on for part two. Amen. So you can pour your wisdom out. You have a lot of wisdom. Glory to God. And insight. All and the glory. <laughs> like when, I first, when I first met you, I was like, oh, yeah, Deidre, mm -hmm. I love her because uh, you remind me so much of myself. Mm -hmm. We're all a work in progress. So um, it was interesting. I was waiting to see if you had said on our LTG group, if you could tell my gift. And I said, she, I know she knows it because I'm just like her. I'm the prophetic gift. Prophetic. <laughs> <laughs> you have the prophetic anointing. And, and let me tell you, and, and, I, and I thank God that this with this um, with this anointing, because I'm growing in it. I'm growing mm -hmm. in it. Um, mm -hmm. But but but. Um, you know, I saw it a long time ago because I mean, you know, because yes. you know how I, I called that, you know, we got a, a pastor on our, our um, we got a pastor and evangelist mm -hmm. and we got two prophets in our in LTG group. Yes. So it's, it's amazing what God put together. He amen. Did. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, and how we're growing together in grace. Yes. But this is through network. This is through community. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I encourage anyone out there tonight. If you do not have someone that you're connected to, mm -hmm. pray that God connects you with a group of ladies like I have. Amen. Uh, my LTG group, I mean, has benefited me in so many ways um, mm -hmm. where I'm able and we are able to be vulnerable mm -hmm. um, and to share our weaknesses, you know, share our strengths. Try mm -hmm. you cry together all the time. Amen. So it's a benefit of having unity. Mm -hmm. Having a network of ladies that love the Lord first. Mm -hmm. And we say, look, and, and what I love too, we come in, we're like, we ain't perfect. <laughs> yes. I would use this word, we jacked up. We need <laughs> God. <laughs> Pull up to the floor up. <laughs> we are torn from the floor up. But, but guess what, Deidre? We mm -hmm. have grown by leaps and bounds in the last yes. two months. Yes. And that's the beauty of the LTG, because that's how Jesus ministered with just the, uh, the disciples. The he, 12, had 12, yes. but he had those that were close to him. Amen. And look at how the church has grown. It has multiplied exponentially. He will heal you internally, exponentially. And after our groups, it was some of the best sleep I've had. <laughs> the best sleep I have had. So anybody who is struggling as re, as it re, uh, results to unforgiveness, if it's trauma related, you you will find rest. God will give you rest for your weary soul. Amen. So. Amen. He will give you rest for your weary soul. So we're going to end there. But Deidre, thank you so much. And um, everyone that's watching, we will be on on a monthly basis. I'm going to have Deidre back part two. Amen. Um, and then also I'm going to have my other LTG group members on if they agree to come on, <laughs> but okay. I know they will. I'm sure they will. But Deja, um, any last words or encouragement that you want to offer um, the viewers? Uh, I just pray that God will give the keys to someone who is still stuck in the mud. I pray that this session will unlock those that stronghold for them to be able to pull down. Um, I just know that it will bless you tremendously and it will surprise you, you know, uh, having the LTG group blessed me tremendously. It blessed you tremendously in ways that we couldn't think. So God will send you someone. Mm -hmm. You're not alone. You're never alone. And there is no distance in the spirit. I just want to share this. We were on four different time zones when we first started. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I said, there is no distance in the spirit. But Lord, this is funny. <laughs> Why are we gonna find time to get it? We, we got one in Egypt, <laughs> one in East Coast, <laughs> one in Pacific, and one in Hawaii. <laughs> we were all over the place, Scott. And I'm thinking, how in the world are we going to be able to meet? Yes. Well, God, oh my God, when we met, He shows up every single Amen. time. Every he met us. Mm -hmm. Right in the midst of it, when we needed him most. Amen. Um, yes. And I thank God again, Deidre, for you and the, and the rest of the ladies. And I'm thanking God for everybody that tuned in on tonight. This is just the very beginning of what God is going to do. Amen. Because I'm believing and trusting him that this is a season that we're going to pull down every stronghold that's keeping us from walking in the complete freedom. 
Amen. that has been promised to us. Yes. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm going to end by saying she's free. She's we free. are free. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, and Hallelujah. Crazy. I'm going to end with my song. Um, I'm going to turn my song back up and, um, and thank everybody for joining in on tonight. And we're asking you to come back and join us next month. I will put out a flyer again. And Deidre probably will be our next guest again if she's available. Amen. <laughs> so hallelujah. we thank God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. And I'm going to close out too with a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, God, for this time. God, we ask you right now, God, that every person that tune in on tonight, God, Lord, we ask you right now to touch them right where they are. Let them know, God, that they are not alone, Father, and that they are free. They are a free in Christ Jesus, Father. Lord, I'm asking you right now, God, to show yourself strong, so show yourself mighty in the mighty Lord Jesus Christ's name, and we thank you on today, God, and we give your name all the praise and all the glory, and continue to have your way in all these things and others. We pray in the mighty and matchless and holy name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And let us say amen. 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 Did you love amen. you? Amen. I love you too. All right. God bless you. God bless. God bless.